Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I want to share 10 tips for how you can get more use and value from the Asana timeline. Now, if you have any questions at the end of this video, please feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or cleaning up your Asana account, getting more out of this tool and improving its usage and adoption within your team, then click the link in the description below to learn more about my Asana consulting options. Now, the timeline feature in Asana gives you a really visual way of seeing when different tasks in your project start and finish and the dependencies between them. Most of the clients we work with tend to use the list or the board view in Asana, but the timeline view is really useful. And we find it's most commonly used in projects where there's kind of an end date that you're working backwards from. So think about maybe a new product launch, a marketing campaign, or an event maybe that you're uh, running or attending. You know, there's sort of this finite lifespan for the project. There's this deadline or cutoff at the end when the project is done. And we're working backwards from that, like the event day, and there's a sequence in which tasks need to happen. That's the other situation where timelines are really useful, is where tasks need to happen in a particular order, and there's a lot of dependencies between those tasks. If you have work or projects like that, then I highly recommend using the timeline view. So here I am inside one of my projects. This is a new product launch, and I have my project organized into different phases for planning, production, and launching. This is the normal list view that you're probably using, or maybe you use the board layout. These are kind of the two most common ways of looking at a project. And up here I can switch to my timeline view. Now my first tip for getting more out of the timeline is to sort your timeline by start date. Now the reason for this is by default your timeline is sorted by section, or you know, you can see my phases here, phase one, two, and three. Personally, if I zoom out a little bit to see a bit more, I find this a bit confusing. I don't know about you, but it's just, to me, I find this a little bit hard to make sense of, and maybe this is why you're not using the timeline. So the first thing I'm gonna do is gonna sort by start date. And there we go, now if I zoom in a little bit, we can now see this really nice flow of when tasks need to happen. So time is obviously running along horizontally. We can see we're in February here. The blue line is today. So I can see this task starting today. I can see my milestones, so there's the green, a green milestone running down the screen there. I can see another one here, and I can see when different tasks start and finish and the dependencies between them. So that just sorting by start date up there, I find if I zoom out a little bit, you know, there we go, I find it's much easier to make sense of and understand the timeline sorting it this way. My next tip is if you like viewing the project as the timeline, if you don't want to have to, you know, you're in the list view, Every time you come over here, you have to switch it to the timeline, sort by start date. We don't really wanna to have to do that every single time. So once I've got the timeline looking the way that I want, I've sorted it by start date, I'm, I'm uh, zooming to half a year. Now I'm gonna save my layout as default. So now if I switch to a different project and then I navigate back to my project, you can see it defaults to my timeline view, it defaults to the sorting and the zoom selection that I have applied. So I'm not having to switch and customize those settings every single time. Tip number three is to use colors to add a bit more detail to your timeline. So if I have no color, you know, I can just see different tasks and that's really it. But if I add, uh, if I choose my color options here, I can choose um, a color that is associated with one of my custom fields. So if I just go to my list view for a second, if I click on one of these tasks, you'll see I have a custom field for status here. And I can see the status of the task, done planning to do in progress, in danger, waiting for approval and behind. So green is kind of good, yellow, orange and red, you know, not good. And so now when I go to my timeline, if I apply my status, you know, there is this Asana default where Asana kind of picks the most appropriate color. You can see this one here, it's actually using the purple from this tag rather than the color from my status. So I'm actually gonna use the status custom field. Again, I'll, I'll save my layout now. And so when I look at the tasks, the color will indicate to me the status of that task. So I get a little bit more meaning now on my timeline. My next few tips are related to dependencies, which are these arrows you can see linking tasks here. So if I click on this task, contact marketing company about promotion, you can see it's actually linked to two different tasks. 
So firstly, it's blocked by the setup Facebook ads for launch task, which is due on 12th of Jan. So we can see that if I follow the arrow backwards, that is this task here. So this is telling me that I can't start this task until this one is done. And if I click on that, I can see Jarvis is responsible for this. So when Jarvis completes this task, if he marks that as done, or if there's a delay to this task, maybe this task is moved backwards, I will get notified because I'm the assignee on this task. And so I'm going to get, get a notification in my inbox to tell me Jarvis has completed or he has delayed his task. So that's really useful. I can then see that this task is also blocking the product production sprint number one task. So I can follow that arrow and that's this task down here. That's my task as well. But if that was assigned to somebody else, again, they would be notified when, uh, when I complete my task. So that's the first tip is to use dependencies to establish these dependent relationships. And the easiest way to do that is if you hover your mouse on a task or a milestone is you can click and drag this dot and that's it. If I drag that onto a task, I have now created a dependency. I can either remove it by clicking the X next to the dependency here, or I can click the line and I can click the X on the line to remove the dependency. Now, tip number five is related to dependency conflicts. If I go up to my timeline options up here, if I go to dependency management options, there's a few ways that we can manage the dependencies and how tasks get updated when a task date is changed. So firstly, we have the option to maintain the buffer between dependent tasks. So if I save that, what this means is, let's take a task like this down here. I have this milestone and it's got three tasks kind of downstream of it that are dependent on that milestone. And there's a period of time here, kind of about a month between these tasks. Now, if I shift that task back, you see the tasks downstream also shift as do the upstream tasks. And so the uh, buffer time between tasks is maintained. I can also choose whether to consume the buffer. So you can kind of see through this little animation here. So if I consume the buffer, if I move a task past the dependent tasks, the dependent tasks will get updated, but that buffer between them is lost. So that's an important consideration to make is how do you want the buffer to be managed? Do you want to consume it? Do you want to maintain it? Or you can choose to ignore the amount of time between dependent tasks. You can just have the task stick to the actual date and no changes to downstream tasks are made. And tip number six is that you can highlight the critical path in your project. Now, what this is, is if you have a string of dependent tasks, the critical path is the sort of longest chain. So we can see there are a load of dependencies in here, but this, working backwards, this task here is dependent on this milestone which is dependent on this task, which is dependent on this milestone and this milestone and this milestone. And that's where the chain ends. This milestone is not dependent on anything else up here. There are other dependencies, but that is the longest chain. And so that is why this is the critical path. This is sort of the most important sequence of tasks that we need to work on. So just turning that on is a really useful way of highlighting the, the most important sequence of tasks that we need to work on. Tip number seven is to make sure you are using milestones to highlight the important deadlines or due dates in a project. So I can do that on my list view. I can go to any of my tasks and if I right click, I can um, mark it as a milestone or unmark it as a milestone. Uh, there we go, mark as milestone. I can also create milestones up here. And so milestones, they're very similar to regular tasks. The only difference is number one, they can only have singular due dates. I can't apply a date range to a task like I can with this one. This has a date range on it. Milestones are singular points in time. And so they are represented with this green line down the page. And so they are typically used for those important deadlines in the project. If I use a portfolio, here's a portfolio of a bunch of client projects. My timeline, uh, if I look at the portfolio timeline, will actually show those milestones at the portfolio level as well. So that's an important consideration when using timelines at the portfolio level is it's only gonna show milestones. It doesn't show all the details of all those regular tasks. And so make sure you're using those appropriately to highlight the major events or deliverables in your project. Tip number eight is to update your weekend settings. If I zoom in a little bit to the month view, you can see these shaded parts on the timeline, which highlight weekends. Now, 
most organizations don't work on a weekend or you're not working on projects at the weekend. And so we don't really want tasks to be scheduled on the weekend. And if I change one of my dependent tasks, I don't want the Asana to schedule work on the weekend. So when I go to my dependency management options, make sure that if you're using the maintain or consume buffer, make sure that you enable or, or disable if you prefer, but most people are gonna to want to enable this, enable the option to, uh, or to enable weekend awareness. So if I have a task like this, where I'm gonna delay this milestone and I'm gonna push it back a day, this will move the tasks to the weekend, but because I have avoid weekends turned on, they get reassigned to the Monday. If I move it back a day, they come forward to the Friday. So the weekends simply get ignored. Tip number nine is that you can make bulk changes to your timeline by selecting portions of the tasks and moving everything at once. Now, while we've looked at the dependency options there and there are some great ways for managing dependencies and maintaining the timeline automatically, sometimes, and maybe this is just personal preference for me, but I just quite like selecting everything with my mouse just by clicking and dragging, and then I can drag everything at once and I can choose what day I want to make everything due on. Of course, I may then accidentally schedule things on weekends, so I might want to make some minor changes after that. But I quite like using this because I like just, uh, if I want to make big changes to the project, I can do this very quickly, manually, uh, using that select and then dragging option. Um, if you don't kind of, if you're not sure how the timeline is going to look when the dependencies apply, sometimes it can just feel a bit safer to, to move everything manually. But it's still very quick and easy to do in bulk using this method. And my final tip, tip number 10, is if you want to create a master timeline, a timeline that shows not just tasks from one project, but multiple projects all in one view, is go ahead and check out one of my other videos that I made before showing how I've actually created this master timeline with, uh, with tasks from multiple projects. Really powerful way of taking this concept of building a timeline, but creating a higher level view with tasks from more than one project. So go ahead and check out that video. And if you have any questions, comments, feedback, back after watching this video, leave me a comment below. And if you want that one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or cleaning up your Asana account, click the link in the description below to learn more about our Asana consulting options. Thank you very much for listening and I will see you in the next video.